Amen. Jesus is Lord here. He's Lord here. He's already been Lord here right now. He's already been Lord here. And if you're not here, my God, my God, I can't describe it to you. I can't describe it to you. But I want to honor our apostles, Lee and Doris Rice. Amen. Amen. I want to honor them. This is our first Christmas where Apostle Doris is not sitting here with us. Hallelujah. This is our first Christmas, and as uh, Pastor Daphne often says, this is uh, one of the first of many firsts. And this is the first one, and I just want to make sure that I take a moment to honor her on this Christmas because... She meant so much to us. Amen. 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 She meant so much to us. And uh, I honor her. I miss her. And I praise God that she took the time to impart some things in me that remain with me today. Amen. She has given me words of wisdom. She's given me advice. She's given me things that I carry forward with me even today. Amen. 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 I also want to say welcome to our Facebook family. I want to say welcome to you. Thank you for stopping in and checking on us to see us. And we also want to say Merry Christmas to you. All together, y'all on count three, we're going to say Merry Christmas to our Facebook family. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from Victory Christian Outreach Church. I also want to say um, hey to our newlyweds who got married on yesterday. I know they're probably watching on Facebook today. We want to say hey to Curtis and Diane, wherever you are. Y'all enjoy yourself, but don't stay too long. We'll get back here. Y'all need it. Amen. Amen. You know, there was a, a young man uh, who grew up on a farm, and uh, he, uh, had a, uh, he had an idea that he didn't want to live on the farm. He wanted to grow up and live in the big city. So he moved away, went to college, and uh, he got himself a really good job in the big city. But he loved his parents, and it was Christmas time, and he began to search for a gift that he could give them, something that would be unique and something that would cost them some money uh, so that they would know how much he loved them. So he searched and searched and searched until he came upon a pet store. And in the pet store, there was a parakeet. And the parakeet could speak five different languages. So he said this would be a good gift for them. He asked the, uh, the pet store owner, how much was this, does this cost? And the pet store owner said, it's $10,000 for this parakeet. And he said, you know what? I'll take it. So he buys the parakeet, and he sends it back to his parents back on the farm. Christmas Day, he calls his parents. And he says, um, so I sent you a gift. Did you get it? They said, yes, we did. We got it. They said, he says, well, did you enjoy it? They said, yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> you see, sometimes we don't know, okay? Sometimes we don't know the nature of a gift. Sometimes we receive something and because we don't know its nature, its purpose, we can misuse it. We received on Christmas a gift. And we have to examine and know its nature. We have to know exactly what it was given for. 
I want y'all to turn with me to the book of John, the gospel of John. If you guys would stand with me for the reading of the word. In the gospel of John, the first chapter. First chapter, verse four and five. Amen. Amen. First John, I mean John, first chapter, verse four. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Andre, could you put that up for me in the Amplified Version? Verse 4 says, in him was light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines on the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or absorbed it, or appropriated it, and is unreceptive to it. Amen. Then I'm going to turn over to John. Still in John, we're going to go to the 12th chapter, verse 35 and 36. John 12, 35 and 36. 35 reads, a little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of the light. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah for the reading of the word. You may have your seat. The title of this message on today is get lit. Thank you, sir. Get lit, y'all. You know, last week, on last week, we had some inclement weather. We had some inclement weather, and there was predictions of snow and rain and ice. And the part that worried me about uh, everything that they were predicting was not the snow. I can deal with the snow. I can deal with the snow. The part that was concerning to me was that part where they were saying, it's a chance that we're going to get some ice. And when we get that ice, it has a, 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 a way of getting on the power lines. And when it gets on the power lines, it knocks your power out. How many of y'all remember that last time we had that real big ice storm and, and knocked the power out everywhere? Yes. You know, and it was in the winter time, you know, and uh, it was so uncomfortable. Well, my wife has an aunt. My wife has an aunt. And during that time period when that power was out, her house had power. Her house was lit up. And because her house was lit, everybody wanted to go to her house because she had warmth. Her refrigerator was working. You could, it was like, hey, can we bring some of our food over there and put some of our food in your refrigerator? You know, and she had power. And her power in the light of her house was drawing people to her. Because of the light that shined from her house, people were drawn to her. You see, the time was tough. It was a rough and tough time. However, be, regardless of what was going on, she was doing okay. Why was she doing okay? She had 
a generator built into her house so that if the power goes out, this generator automatically kicks in. Just like that. Power goes out, that generator kicks on. Her house might blink for not even a half second, and her power is going. So regardless of what's going on outside, how tough it is, what the world, what is happening in the world, she has an alternative power source. She has a way to keep her house lit even when the world is dark. And because she has this power source, because she got lit, Everyone was drawn to her by the power, by the light source that was on the inside of her house. And as a matter of fact, you could see her house from miles away. Everything was dark around her, but when you turn the corner, you could see her house lit up like a Christmas tree. People are drawn by this power and by this light. And this is the Christmas season. And it's time for us to get lit. Amen? Amen. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, and the 14th verse. Matthew 5, 14. Matthew 5, 14 reads, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 14. Verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. This word light that he uses in the Greek is a word phos. And if you see it, it's P-H-O-S. And you can kind of look at it and you can begin to see a word in there it's a root word, and that root word is a word that we get things like photo. So Jesus says, you are the photo of the light. You are the image of this, of this light. You are the image of me in the world. You are this photo. And the question is, what does your light or photo or image of Christ that you represent look like to the world? You see, I have a, uh, a, a lantern that I bought. And this lantern is big and I can turn it on and it, it generates a lot of light. So if my power goes out, I can turn this lantern on and it can light up a lot of stuff in my house. But we also have candles. But if I put a candle on, it doesn't generate as much light. It doesn't generate as much light. And so the question is, what does our light look like to the world? What does your light look like to the world? What does my light look like to the world? Am I projecting like the image of Christ, like this lantern? Or do I look like a candle with just a small flicker of light that can be easily extinguished by any wind or trouble? Do you remember when Jesus took the disciples up on the mountain and he, he took them with him and he was transfigured. 
he began to, he took them up and they watched him as he began to shine. He began to glow. The deity of him, of Jesus, was coming out. They could see the light. They could see this deity of him coming out. This light was in him and shown. And Jesus says, you are that same light. You are that same light. You have that same ability to be transfigured because he is now on the inside of you. So because he's on the inside of you, you should be able to be transfigured. People should be able to see you when you're on top of the hill glowing like Christ. Because he's on the inside of you. They should be able to see your light shining. You see, first, in some of the uh, uh, scriptures we read that were in John, he says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. But here, when he gets to Matthew, he says, you are the light of the world now. You are. Because you believe in me now, you have the light on the inside of you. You see, this light is a reflection of a greater light. The light that we have is a reflection of a greater light. It works like the sun and the moon. The moon has no light in and of itself. But the light that you see from the moon is a reflection from the sun, S-U-N. The sun shines on the moon and projects a light that can be seen from all over. We have a light. We have a light that is giving us light. Ours is the S-O-N. The S-O-N gives us the light to project. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's time for us, once again, y'all, to get lit, to get a hold of that light that is shining on us and allow that light to shine to the world. Amen. Amen. You see, once once you've been set apart, once you've been set apart, you can't you can't be hidden. You can't be hidden. It says in verse 14, he says a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Once you've been separated, once his light comes on the inside of you, once you accept him, begin to believe in him, receive the light that comes from him, you no longer can be hidden. You're set apart now. You have a purpose now. People see you now. You have a responsibility now. And the responsibility is so great in this time period. At Christmas, when you're going to come in contact with your families and your friends. The light that comes from him, you have to shine. Amen? Amen. 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 You have to shine. You know, the arch was built with the purpose of being seen. They didn't make the arch five feet tall. They made the arch 630 some odd feet high. It can be seen anywhere you're in the city. You can pretty much look and you'll see the arch. And the arch is called the gateway to the west. So here we are, set apart, built and made to be a gateway, a gateway to Christ. People are drawn to the arch. They use the arch as a, a, a people that come to town say, yeah, I, 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 I knew where we were because we saw the arch. People should know where they are because they see you. They should know. They should be able to find their way because of you. Because there's a light. Because there's a light. The uh, earlier scripture we read, it says if you don't have the light, you won't be able to find your way. You should be able to find your way, and everybody who's with you should be able to find the way because you have an alternative power source. In a dark world, you are a shining light. You are a shining light. 
verse 15 Verse 15 says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all of those who are in the house. The key word that I pull out of there is in the house. See, earlier he said in verse 14, he said, you're the light of the world. But now in verse 15, he says, you're a light in the house. You're a light in the house. It's Christmas time. It's time to let us, our light shine. We've already been described as a light in the world. So out there in the streets, you're already a light. But now he comes back in verse 15. He says, you're also a light in the house, in your own house. It's time for you to ensure that you are a bright, shining light in your own house. You have to allow. mm -mm -mm. You have to allow your light to shine. And not be distinguished. I know it's hard. I know it's hard, especially in Christmas time with all the different folks that you're going to have to deal with. You know, we got different relatives and some of them are more difficult than others. But you got to let your light shine. Because if your light's not shining, they're not going to be able to find their way. Amen. They're not going to be able to find their way. Andre, can you put up uh, Philippians 2, verse 14? Philippians 2, verse 14. We have got to be light bearers. Amen. Philippians 2.14 says, do all things without complaining and disputing. Continue. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Disputes and arguing. You got to do it without disputing and arguing. Man, I see people disputing and arguing over some of the most trivial things in the world right now. People killing each other over a piece of chicken. That's crispy chicken. That's okay. See now you're trying. You're meddling now. <laughs> you're meddling now. You're trying to test me to see if I fight over that piece of chicken, right? <laughs> but you know you do you got you, without disputing without arguing it's so easy to do yeah. so easy to do but you're placed there in your house to be that light you're placed there to be the light in the house you can't fall into those situations where people are arguing and going on or trying to test you because they will Amen. people are always trying to test your faith They're always trying to test your faith to see if you can bend so that they can have something to say, so that they can see if you are blameless, harmless children of God without a fault in the midst of everything that's going on. They want to find out. They're going to push your buttons to see. They're going to see, you know how you can take a candle and you can just squeeze it like that and put it out? They want to see if they can put out your light. They want to see if they can just. And here you are now, a candle without a purpose. What good is a candle with no light? You've allowed the circumstances and situations to put your light out. Instead of like Auntie Pearl's house, when there's trials and tribulation, her alternative power source kicks in. It never goes out despite of what's going on around you. And that's the way you have to do. You have to be able to draw on the internal power that's on the inside of you. It'll never let your light go out. The sun 
S-O-N is always shining on you. And you should always shine because of it. You should be a a reflection, amen? amen? Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The first word of verse 16 is let. That means we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a decision to make. In every situation that's going to happen to you in this Christmas season, while you're having fun and while you're going through uh, things, you're enjoying your family, you're enjoying your friends, whether it's at home, whether it's at someone else's home, whether it's a Christmas party at work, you have a choice and a decision to make every time that you're confronted with something that might put your light out. You have a choice and a decision to make. You have not only a choice and a decision, but you have a responsibility. Because God never puts you in a situation just aimlessly. He doesn't just plant you at the the company Christmas party with the idea of you going there to have fun. It it just doesn't happen. God is too intentional for that. He's too intentional for that. He's going to put you there. There's going to be an assignment in that room, I promise you. And so when you go to these parties, when you go to your, your family and friend's house, make sure before you put your foot across the doorstep that you pray and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes to my assignment in this place. I know that you have purpose for me in this room today. Show me my purpose. Show me. Open that door. And then you walk in. And the purpose will walk to you, I promise. You won't have to search long. Amen. He says in verse 16, let your light so shine before men. He said, so shine. He didn't just say let it shine. He said, so shine. He used that another time. He used that another time. He said, for I so love the world. He wants you to have that kind of so. Just like he said, I so. He wants you to have that same. So let your light so shine. Let it all come out. Let it all shine. Don't, don't, don't hold none back. You know, we have a tendency to get in these parties and these things or in Christmas parties and we shy back from our faith. We try to be politically correct and try not to step on anybody's toes because people say they get offended. He's the rock of offense. He's the rock of offense. You, you have him on the inside of you. Remember, he's the one that's giving you this light. They are going to be offended. Trust me. So you just get used to it. Just get used to it. It's all right. It's all right. When you, when you say, when they say to you, hey, how's it going? And you say, man, I'm blessed. Praise God. It's okay. It's okay. You can say that. With authority. You hear me? Now, when you're at work, you know, don't, don't go too far. You know, don't get on the, on the table in the lunchroom and start preaching and stuff. Don't do that. You know, because then you're just being weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be weird. Don't be weird, because when, when you be weird, you run people off. But, you know, use your conversation with people 
because they're going to help you to they're going to help you with your conversation. They're going to talk to you about the things that they need help with. They're going to talk to you about them. So use those things. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So when your light is shining, I'm sorry, Daphne. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor Daphne. <laughs> let, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. When your light is shining, it will equate with good works. When your light is shining, you will do things that are good. You're going you're gonna to do things like give turkeys away at Thanksgiving. You're going to give money into projects that help others. You're going to do things, your good works, so that men may see and glorify your father. Good works. Let your light shine so that they may see your good works. See, they'll see your good works before they see your faith. You can walk around at your job and nobody know that you're a Christian. But the minute that you do something like they come up to you and say, hey, my granddaughter, is, um, my granddaughter is selling these cookies. Can you help me uh, and buy some cookies for me? And I say, no, you know what? No, I don't really want to eat cookies. I've been trying to you know, cut down on the sweets, but I tell you what, I'm going to give you $20 to put into it. Put this twenty dollars on your granddaughter, and she says to someone else, "You know what he did? He gave twenty. He didn't even want the cookies. There's something different about him. It's a good work." that people will see. Yes. Amen. It's a good work that they'll see. So let your good lights. My, my wife, you know, she, she uh, at Christmas parties at, at, for her family or, or even here, she works tirelessly. Yes. She works tirelessly. You know, she walks around, she cleans, she, she gets there early, sets up, helps people, fixes people's plates. She does all this. And then at the end, she hangs around and cleans up, and she expects nothing for it. Yeah. Amen. She just does it because it's a good work. Yeah. And because she does this good work, people know of us yeah. and our faith. Yeah. They know. And the word says that because of it, they will glorify your father yeah. in heaven. Amen. Your good works will cause men to give God the glory. Amen. And that's where we all started. Amen. That's where we all started. That's where the light shining in us starts and begins and ends so that he gets the glory. Amen. So I want to challenge you on today. I want to challenge you on today to begin to pray in earnest. Asking God, Lord, help me with my light. Help me to have a light that shines so, so much that it empowers me, that people see me and through me, they see you. They see me as being transfigured. 
that the light is shining in me so greatly. And that it empowers me to do good works that men will see and give you the glory. And that I am a gateway. Like the arch, I'm a gateway to you. People will be led to me by your light. And through that light, they'll find you. They'll find you. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for your word. I thank you that this word has changed us today, has moved us in a different direction, has helped us to see something different, has helped us, Father, to be prepared, to prepare ourselves to be that sanctuary, Father, pure and holy, pure and holy. Able to move through our relationships with family and friends without arguments and, and uh, uh, riling up. That we will be peacemakers. We'll be peacemakers. I thank you, Father, for it. I give you the praise, Father, because on this day that we celebrate as the birth of Christ, this holiday season, I thank you for your gift for the Son, for Jesus Christ. I thank you. I thank you for that gift. It is the best gift ever. I give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. church, what you learn? I said, I learned how to get lit. I learned how to get lit, y'all. You ought to come to my church. What happens? We get lit every Sunday. We get lit, y'all. Amen. Somebody say, God is amazing. God is amazing. All of our first time.